In my last video, I put together a school laptop for under $150 using a Dell Latitude E6400 as a base. Now, some of my viewers were disgruntled because they knew I could do better with that. I'm able to get cheap laptops all the time, and they couldn't understand why I didn't go with something a little bit more powerful. Why didn't I try to get a little bit more bang for my buck? Well, the quick answer is that I want to put something together that would be easily accessible to everyone. So you can go on eBay, find a Dell Latitude E6400, for 25 bucks plus 10 to 15 dollars shipping without a problem it's really easy to get an e6400 for that price throw a new ssd processor battery ram and charger into the picture and you have a pretty powerful school laptop for under 150 bucks well today we're going to bump things up a bit because i managed to get this dell latitude e6410 off ebay for 50 dollars plus shipping actually it's a little bit more complicated than that because the seller listed this laptop in Correctly. And if you want some more details about that, I'll put the link to the eBay finds video down in the description. If you go on eBay and try to get a Dell Latitude E6410 for 50 bucks plus shipping, you're going to have a hard time doing so. Now, it's not impossible. I have seen a couple listings pop up since I bought mine, but prices close uh, to what I paid for mine. Not exactly. They've hovered around 60 to 65 dollars, including shipping. But if you put in a best offer, chances are you might be able to get something for 50 bucks just as I did. So as you guys can clearly see, this deal is a little bit more difficult to get than the deal I got on the Dell Latitude E6400. Um, but as you will see in the video, taking the time to hunt down an E6410 instead of just going with the E6400 is definitely worth it. The E6410 has the same rugged build quality as the E6400, but with better hardware. So after the upgrades, we have 4GB of DDR3 RAM. I did have to add an additional 2GB of RAM into that system. Total cost was 7 bucks, uh, and I got that RAM from eBay. I stuck with the processor that the system shipped with, which was a first-gen i5 M540 at 2.53 GHz with 2 cores and 4 threads. Um, I stuck with the same SSD that I did in the E6400 upgrade video, so I used the 90 gigabyte KingSpec SSD that I bought off Amazon for $33, and I know some people don't really agree with my SSD choice here. Some people don't trust KingSpec in particular, um, but I've been using them for a while, and I've never had any issues with any of my KingSpec drives. For our video, uh, we have uh, Intel integrated HD graphics along with a 1280 by 800 14 inch display. Adding a brand new aftermarket 9 cell Tree and B battery from Amazon along with a genuine Dell charger from Amazon, the total cost of this build ends up being $131.09. And if you want to check out any of these parts, all of their corresponding links will be down in the description. If you thought the E6400 was just a tad bit too slow for your preference, then the E6410 is definitely the way to go. On top of scoring better in the benchmarks, I ran Passmark and 3D Mark on this machine. And unlike the E6400, this machine was actually able to run uh, 3D Mark. Uh, but with both of those benchmarks, it did perform significantly significantly better than the E6400 did. Now looking past the benchmarks, because these numbers actually give you a pretty vague idea of what it's like to use this system on a day-to-day -day basis, it's much better uh, to demo this system actually running daily office applications, and that's exactly what I did with Windows 10 Pro 64-bit installed. I know some people are gonna be like, oh, you should have installed Windows 7, how dare you go with Windows 10, heretic! But let me explain myself. I went with Windows 10 because I wanted to go with the latest version of Windows just to keep this video uh, relevant for as long as possible. And with Windows 10 in combination with the system's SSD, i5, and 4GB of DDR3, it performs pretty much as well as my T430, which I put a lot of work into. My T430 has a quad core i7, eight threads, uh, eight gigabytes of DDR3 and an SSD. Um, and I really don't notice a performance difference between the two when just performing daily office tasks. Now that's not to say this E6410 would be a drop in replacement for my T430. I guarantee you if you threw something like a uh, video editing workflow at the E6410, it would uh, choke up quite a bit. Uh, that's, that's where my T430 
430 would definitely take the high ground. But when it came to web browsing and some office applications, the E6410 took everything I could throw at it. So I popped open my website, the Associated Press, along with YouTube and CNN. And I got a couple dislikes last video for using CNN. People do not understand why I use CNN. I do not use CNN because I prefer it as a news source. I use CNN because the website is very heavy. It is probably one of the most script heavy websites um, I have ever seen. And it drags even some of my higher uh, end systems down. So it's a good benchmark as far as web browsing is concerned. And this laptop was able to load up CNN without a hitch. It was also able to play back 720p YouTube video at 60 frames per second without skipping a beat. I didn't notice any frame drops and the quality looked great. Now keep in mind there's no point of bumping the video quality up to 1080p because this screen resolution is 1280 by 800. Microsoft Office solutions such as Word and PowerPoint open within seconds and the system's multitasking capabilities are adequate for educational and or business workflows. On top of all that, the system is also capable of some light gaming, much more so than the E6400 was. However, keep in mind that I did not build this out with the intention of it being a gaming PC. So while it can handle some older titles, if you try to throw some newer titles at this PC, it probably won't be able to handle those games. So this was purely built out as a school slash work machine. And chances are, if you're a student like me, you're not going to have that much time for gaming anyway. Uh, between school and work and driving back and forth to everything, you know, unfortunately, your free time for gaming will get consumed pretty quickly. And of course, I did not forget about my Linux viewers. So I installed Ubuntu Mate 16.04 on this system as well, ran similar tests with web browsing, multitasking, and office applications, and found that I got the same results. The system was just as responsive, opened up web pages just fine, applications opened like that within a snap. And I had no problem with multitasking. And that's also why I did not include the cost of an operating system in this build, because no one is forcing you to buy a Windows license. You could go with an open source alternative, such as the one I'm using here, or one of the many other Linux distributions out there. If you find one that you like, I highly suggest donating to the project because developers do not run off hugs and kisses, unfortunately. So if you can find an E6410 for around 50 to 60 bucks, I highly suggest picking it up instead of going with the E6400. Now the E6400 still makes a great school machine after a little bit of work, um, but this build actually ended up costing less than the E6400 build because I didn't have to buy a new processor and I also didn't have to buy two sticks of RAM. I only had to buy one stick of DDR3, which was only seven bucks used off off eBay. Um, so you're getting better performance for actually less with the E6410 build. So um, if you can, I would suggest trying to pick up a E6410 instead of an E6400 like I did in the last video. Now before this video ends, I have to very quickly answer the same three questions I get asked over and over and over again in nearly every single one of my videos so uh, that those comments do not blow up the comments section. So question one, why didn't you just go with the cheap $150 insert cheap laptop name here from insert Chinese site here? Um, well, because you're not getting the same build quality from those laptops that you are getting in these older enterprise laptops. These old enterprise laptops have lasted for a very long time and they will continue to last a long time because they are sturdy enterprise machines, whereas these cheaper $150 uh, grab bag plastic laptops really aren't that durable. Question number two, why didn't you go with this used enterprise laptop instead? And usually the answer to that question is because either it's out of budget or I just didn't want to. Question number three, why didn't you pick a laptop that's so bulky and my answer to that usually is that the laptop's really not that bulky. Maybe it's just the uh, era that I grew up in. I'm used to laptops like this. I carry around a T430 that's also five pounds. This uh, E6410 weighs five pounds um, and is a little under one inch thick. Personally, I don't see a problem with it, but once again, that's one of those more suggestive things. With a laptop like this, I think you can just grab it, throw it in a backpack and go. That is going to be about it for this video today. We put together a budget laptop with plenty of IO, excellent build quality, approximately four to five hours of battery life, 
great performance, and decent portability depending on how you look at it. If you want to support this channel, you can do so by checking out my Amazon or eBay affiliate links. Don't forget to drop a like on the uh, video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Stay up to date with everything AA computers and technology by checking out our Facebook page. Thanks for watching once again, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of AA computers and technology.